you to God in the IS. We want to thank God for this day. And uh, in Nigeria, it is an holiday. I don't know where you are watching. I don't know if it is an holiday too. But it's an holiday in Nigeria. So this recording, we are talking about the benefits thereafter of growth. Monday through Wednesday, we talk about the evidence. Now I want to talk about the benefits of growth. And uh, if you must know, generally speaking, growth brings responsibility. Growth brings reward. That's why when you employ a child, it is called child labor and it is illegal. So it takes growth for you to be given responsibilities or to be able to create wealth. It takes growth, growth in knowledge, growth in relationship, growth in whatever way you find yourself. So we want to talk about the benefits of growth. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you because it is your intention to reward us. Scripture says you reward those that diligently seek you and that you don't forget the labor of love. Lord, as we discuss this benefit, help us so that we can take responsibility of our growth so that as we grow, we can benefit thereof. In Jesus' name, amen. So the truth about growth in Christianity is the presence of the Holy Spirit. The presence of the Holy Spirit. And now that's why our test is at 1.8. Because you see, Jesus said, and I'm going to read it from the Good News Translation. At 1.8, Scripture says, But when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you will be filled with power, and you will be witnesses for me in Jerusalem, in all Judea, and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Now, so what happens is that when you as a child of God desire growth, you will be in fellowship with the Holy Spirit. You allow the Holy Spirit. To, the disciples before the uh, adventure of the Holy Spirit or, or coming of the Holy Spirit, they had issues. In fact, Peter was running from accusation from privilege of being showing himself that he associated with Jesus Christ. The rest of them were hiding from all over what Jesus led. But when the Holy Spirit come upon, came upon them, everything changed. And that's why Apostle Paul, in Philippians chapter 4, speaking from verse 13 to 19, he said, I can do all things. One of the evidence or benefit of growth, rather, is the fact that you can do what ordinarily you are not able to do. That's why Jesus said in Matthew 19, 26, He said, with God, that means that you alone cannot do it, but with God, you can do all things. That's why I said, with God, nothing shall be impossible. With men, it is impossible. So when you grow in Christ, by the adventure of the Holy Spirit in your life, that the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and by the incoming, infilling of the Holy Spirit, you are endowed with power. Power to do beautiful things. And that's why Paul was speaking in that Philippian 4, from 13 to 9. I said, I can do all things. And he began to tell them the benefit of that he can do all things, not by himself, but by the Spirit. And in verse 19, he said, all of you that are supporting my ministry, helping me so that I can do what God wants me to do. He said, you have been benefiting. He said, that I'm hungry. That's what I'm asking. You have been benefiting for doing it. He said, my God, my God shall prosper you, sir. Do you know the meaning of that? Isaiah 46, 20, uh, 26a. He says that anytime, I think I'll read it from the Good News Translation. Isaiah 44, verse 26. I'm reading the A part. He says, But when my server makes a prediction, a statement, a declaration, when I send a messenger to, my, or to review my plans, I make those plans and predictions come true. So, when Paul said, my God shall supply your need, God will watch over it to perform it. That's one of the benefits of growth. When you grow in Christ, you become his witness. Everywhere you go, whatever you say, he will watch over it to perform it. Sir, when you get to that level, satisfaction comes in. The Lord bless you.